Welcome to the presentation on ratios. Now I'm going to start just giving you a definition of ratios. And this is I got from Wikipedia. A ratio is a quantity that denotes the proportional amount of magnitude of one quantity relative to another. So I'm going to tell you from the beginning that I think a ratio is something that's easier to understand than to give a definition for, because I don't think that Wikipedia definition is that useful. Let me give you some examples. Um, if there are, let's say there are, let me get, make sure this pen size is right. Let's say there are 10 boys and two girls in a class. So the ratio of boys to girls would be 10 to 2, or 10 to 2. Those are two different ways of writing it. And we know from fractions that that's also the same thing as 5 to 1, or 5 over 1. We want to keep the 1 there, because we know that it's a ratio of one thing to another thing. So what does that mean? All that means is that for every five boys, there's one girl. And so if we told you that the ratio of boys to girls in a room is 5 to 1, and we told you that there are, let's say we told you that there are 100 girls, then we'd know that, well, for every one of those girls, there's five boys. So that means that there would be 500 boys, right? Or you could also look at that as the ratio of boys to girls is 500 to 100, which equals 5 to 1. And this is a typical way that a ratio is written, 500 to 100, of boys to girls. Now let me ask you a couple of questions based on that. I think you get the general idea. If I told you that the ratio of, uh, let's say, red balls to green balls in a bag is, let's say, it's 2 to 3. And then if I also told you that there are, let's say, there there are, let's say, 40 red balls. How many uh, blue balls, are, how many green balls are there? Well, what we say is the ratio of red balls to green balls. So we know that there are 40 red balls. And then we want to solve for the number of green balls. That that is equal to 2 to 3. And then we could just solve this. We, multi we just cross multiply. 40 times 3 is 120 is equal to 2g. And then we just solve. We just say g equals 60. And there's an easier way of, of doing this kind of in your head. And this is the algebraic way that will always work. But you could also just say, let me write this a little bit. This is a 3 down here. You can also say, well, to get from 2 to 40, I had to, you have to multiply by 20. So to get from 3 to g, I'm also going to multiply by 20. And so 3 times 20 is 60. That's another way to do it. A lot of you might actually find it more intuitive just to think about it. Well, if for every two red balls, there are three green balls, then if there are 40 red balls, then it, it makes sense that there, there would be 60 green balls. Because for, um, for every 20, there would be 30. For every 40, there would be 60. I hope I'm not completely confusing you. Let me give you another example. Let's say the ratio of boys to girls is equal to um, 2, 2 to 7. And if I were to tell you that the total class, the class, has 180 kids in it, can we figure out how many boys and girls there are in the class? Well, let's think about it. Well, we know that the boys to girls is equal to 2 to 7. And we also know that the boys plus girls is equal to 180. So here we have a system of two equations and two unknowns. And you could actually, if you really uh, think about it, you could actually solve this without algebra. But I'll show you the algebraic way, because when com problems get complicated, this will always work. So what we could do is we can do substitution. We know that b is equal to 2 
over 7g, right? I just multiplied both sides of this equation by g times g. It cancels out there, and then times g. And you get this. And then we can just substitute that back in for b. So then we have 2 over 7g plus g is equal to 180. And what's 2 sevenths g plus, we could say, 1g, or 7 over 7g? Well, you could do the fraction, but it's 2 sevenths plus 1 is the same thing as, that's equal to 2 sevenths plus 7 sevenths, right? Because that's just 1. g is equal to 180. And I'm jumping around on the chalkboard on purpose to, to intentionally confuse you. So let me. Uh, Okay, this is where I am. So 2 sevenths plus 7 sevenths g equals 180. So we have 9 sevenths g is equal to 180. And then we can just multiply both sides times the reciprocal, times 7 over 9. Whoops, that's not a g, that's a 9. Once again, intentional device to confuse you. <laughs> These cancel out. And you get g equals 180, g equals 180 times 7 over 9. Well, 180 divided by 9, this is just 20, right? So g is equal to 140. And so if there are 140 girls in the room, how many boys are there going to be? Well, we know that the whole class is 180 people. So there's, and we know b plus g is 180. So there's going to be the boys are equal to 40. And, and this is really. Um, you know, about about as difficult as I guess we could say basic ratio problems get. Um, there's nothing really difficult about ratios. They're just representing for every amount of one thing, how much do you have of the other thing, and then you can use that, I guess, ratio um, to if you have some other information in terms of how many total people there are, or how many total objects there are, or how much of one object there is. You can use that to figure out how much of the other object there is, or how many uh, total objects there are. Um, I think you're you're now ready to try some of the ratio problems, and uh, I'm going to do another presentation on what what I would consider uh, slightly more advanced ratio problems. So uh, have fun.